English Across the Pond. A podcast for English learners who want to take their language skills to the next level. Brought to you by me, Dan, from England. And me, Jennifer, from the United States. We are both English teachers and together we have over 30 years of teaching experience. Join us every week for a mix of chat, fun and language improvement. Hello and welcome to this week's English Across the Pond. Jennifer and I are going to take you on a journey to America and England. We're going to be telling you about places we recommend you visit if you're ever in the US or the UK. Even if you're not planning on visiting us anytime soon, there's still so much that you can learn from this podcast. Don't forget to download the free episode guide from EnglishAcrossThePond.com and if you want to get serious about your language learning in 2017, then click on subscribe. Okay, England, America, let's do it. Hello, Dan. Hello, English Across the Pond listeners. What's going on today? Hi, Jennifer. Hello to our dear listeners. How are things with you in America? Everything okay? Everything is so fabulous. Beautiful. Going well. The new website is great. How exciting has all of the positive feedback been? Wonderful. It's so nice to get in touch with people and I'm glad that we're building more of a community now, which was one of our goals for 2017 and I'm so happy that it's happening. Yes. The transcripts have been great. Yeah. The subscriptions have been wonderful. So I knew the transcripts would be popular. I know. So I'm excited for more listeners to jump on board. Yeah. So that is all exciting. This episode is exciting today as well. I think it's going to be a great episode. Let's kick it off. What's the title? Title are the top five, well, six things. The top six things to do and see in the UK and the US of A. Yeah, so we've divided it up into three each. So three things that we would recommend each other and our listeners do if they're lucky enough to be in this country or in that country, um, England and America. Yes. Um, I want to hear yours first. Well, the first one, Jennifer, I'm going to take you back in time. I'm taking you back 5,000 years, my friend. Oh. And the place is... Stonehenge. Yeah, you got it right. Congratulations. Yeah. Stonehenge, if our listeners don't know, is a stone circle, which doesn't really sound very exciting, but it's 5,000 years old. Some of the stones are nine meters high, so it's really, really impressive. I think the pyramids, the pyramids in Egypt are 3,000 years old, so Stonehenge is much older than that. Yeah. And um, it's nobody is sure what Stonehenge is for. A huge stone circle. Some people think it's some sort of memorial, maybe something religious. Some people think it's a kind of way to read the stars and the movement of the sun. Some people think it's for UFOs to land. Ooh, wow. But I have been, I've been a few times, and it is really awe-inspiring. It's really humbling, and, you know, you think 5,000 years, it's just great to sort of, like, stare at them and sort of contemplate life and sort of, you know, how old the universe is and things like that. So I would recommend going to Stonehenge. Awesome. Where is it exactly? It's in Wiltshire, which is kind of, if you know where London is, it's kind of like west of London. You kind of go to the left of London, it's down in the south of England, quite a long way from here. And it's in the Wiltshire Plains, a very, very, very flat part of the country. It's Ooh. awesome. Well, I'm putting it on my bucket list as we speak. Gorgeous. What you got for me? I'm also going to take you back. <gasps> millions. Oh. <laughs> in millions of years. Oh, okay. Any guess at where I'm taking you? Well, if it's millions of years, I don't think it's going to be... <laughs> I think it's going to be something natural. I'm, it's my guess. 
You are right, my friend. Ooh. We are going to Sedona. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Uh, do you know what Sedona is? Can you picture it? I have a feeling it's sort of like it's deserty with the famous sort of like red rocks. Is that is that the right thing? Yes. It's just these beautiful, beautiful like canyons and walls mm. and these stones and these like mountains. And um, when you look at some of the the stones and the walls, you can mm. just see like different layers of oh, stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, these date back to hundreds of millions of years. Sounds good. And it's just, it's gorgeous. It's its gorgeous looking at like a, a white, a tan, a red, a brown. These just mm. different colors. It looks almost like a painting. And is it very popular? Is it very crowded or? Oh, so, so, so crowded. Oh, yeah. And it actually has this, this like um, energy, kind oh. of this like special energy there. Yeah. And there's these vortexes of energy on these certain oh hikes and walks that you can go on. So when you go into the town, there's energy healers and spiritual oh. healers and mm. sound healers and, you know, all kinds of... It's a very, like, hippy-dippy kind of place. Yeah, yeah sounds good. And um, very, very popular. Mm. Very popular. And absolutely beautiful. I'd love we to went, visit. Yeah, we went during um, the wintertime. And there's like, you can see some snow on some of the mountains in the back. You mm. can rent a little cabin, make fire. Oh, definitely a top to do in the US. Yeah, gorgeous. It's on my list. Yeah. I'm going to uh, come forward about five million years. <laughs> okay. Modern day. Um, most. I think if our listeners think of famous things in the UK, it's mainly London. It's sort of like London, 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 London. So, you know, I chose Stonehenge because it's not in London. But the next one is, and it is the London Eye. Ooh. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. I have seen it. Oh. But just on the outside. If people don't know, I would imagine most people have heard of the London Eye. It's a great big wheel with pods that you can sort of get inside and you sort of go around. It's very, very high. I, so I'm afraid of heights. So I don't know that oh. it would, I liked how I experienced the London Eye from uh, the bottom. <laughs> looking up. It's looking up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can, on a good day, you can see 40 kilometers. Whoa. Amazing, huh? Yeah. And um, yeah, it takes around half an hour to get around. And um, constantly popular right next to the yeah. houses of parliament and uh yeah i really recommend it i mean a really different way to have a look at a city um so yeah london i two thumbs up from me awesome and i'm imagining you have been on it right yeah i've been on it a couple of times because i've been there with students and uh Ooh. a really great experience yeah it's something else the london eye Hey, are you enjoying this episode of English Across the Pond? Does this podcast help you in your English skills? Then please take a second and consider helping us and helping English Across the Pond. For as little as $1 for this episode, you can help us continue creating these episodes and free English resources. If you would like to support our podcast, and help us, then please visit patreon.com slash E-A-T-P. That's www.patreon.com slash E-A-T-P. Thank you so much for helping us. That's two from me. What's your second one, Jennifer? I am going to keep the momentum going with nature. Actually, all of oh, mine are kind of nature. Nice. So I'm, 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 that's my theme for the day. Um, mm -hmm. Yosemite National Park. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And they're so, yeah, gorgeous. Mm. Um, you've never been, right? No, ma'am. So they are, this park is absolutely beautiful. And there's a lot of ways you can experience it. You know, I've just driven through it. Mm -hmm. 
So you can just drive through and see all the beauty. You can go camping. You can go hiking. There's waterfalls and these giant redwood trees and beautiful, beautiful rock formations. And I mean, these trees are out of this world. I mean, you are like an ant next mm. to some of these trees. And is the park very big? It's pretty it's pretty big. Mm. Something like over two, I want to say over 200 miles long. Oh. Yeah, you might be. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure it's it's pretty darn big. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. And I think that, like, maybe I've said this before, but um, I think a lot of people in this country, when we think of America, we think of movies and we think of, like, famous people. We think of New York. We think of Los Angeles. And I think people tend to not think about um, the nature and how beautiful uh, America is. And there's mountains, there's desert, there's snow, there's, you know, there's absolutely everything in one huge continent. So I'd really, really love to have the chance to sort of a little bit get off the beaten track and um, yeah. visit some of these national parks. And kind of, I guess it's not the real America. That's a misnomer, really. I mean, New York is the real America. Everything yeah. is the real America. But to get to see maybe, um, perhaps like a little bit of a different side of America. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you did kind of mention all of the places that are obvious that I didn't yeah. necessarily want to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit the same yeah. with, like, I could easily have just gone London, 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 London. But um, I did want to mention the London Eye, but um, I tried to only have, you know, one from London. That one's really cool because of what you can see at the top. Yeah, quite right. My third one... Yeah. ...isn't really just... It isn't really a place. It's actually kind of linked to what we were just saying, where I think even for me, generally when I'm driving around England, we drive from A to B. So the nearest big city to my town is called York. York's beautiful. And you drive to York. But between here and York, if you turn off the major road, there's amazing old little towns. And it's very, very, very English. I think it's kind of like a postcard kind of English or an image that maybe some of our listeners have of cottages Ooh. and little streams and churches and, and and that really does exist but it's very easy not to see it if you visit England I guess you tend to go to London and maybe travel to York maybe or visit Leeds or Manchester maybe Edinburgh and you might not see what's behind the main things but it's I'm always surprised when if I'm ever driving around the small roads, how pretty the little towns are and how kind of very English they seem as well. Um, so, yeah, I would r recommend, if it's possible for people, to get off the beaten track and just sort of scratch beneath the surface and see what's behind um, the main parts, the main tourist attractions, Ooh. and see these little villages. They're really beautiful, nice places. Nice. Um, my final one Yeah. is actually pretty famous now that I'm thinking about it. I'm sure everyone has heard of it if they've done some research. Mm -hmm. I apologize for everyone who loves the East Coast because I also realize that all of my suggestions <laughs> are on the West Coast, oh, well, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have a bias. Yeah. But um, if you are able to drive, rent a car or whatever while you're on a vacation here is to definitely drive as much of the 101 as you can. Is it like Route 101, is it? Route 101, oh, yeah. Right. Mm. So it's this like major, you know, road highway that you, if you drove the whole thing, you could experience Oregon, Washington, and California. Wow, Oregon would be, and nothing against the other two, but Oregon would be amazing. Uh, California's pretty dang cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, all of them are, are gorgeous because you just go through um, some beautiful 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 things mm. um obviously california i mean it's all along the coast too so a lot of the way you'll have like the ocean on one of your sides whatever way you're going and you'll go through some beautiful beautiful green and parks and forests and mm. you know you just experience so much sounds fantastic Mm -hmm. Sounds amazing. I don't think I've. Um, we know, like, of course, like Route sixty six. We know here, and I think most people know about Route sixty six. I don't know if I've heard of one o. Is it called one o one? Is it the one o one? Yeah, you would never call it the one zero one. No, no, no. It's the one o one. Yeah, yeah. It sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. And is your house near the one o one? No, not now because I am still in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. 
but when I lived in California, at one point I was near the one oh no no not not really the one oh one. Um there's the Pacific Coast Highway, the oh, PCH. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's more like uh San Diego and kind of goes up through um Los Angeles and then the one oh one is really like mostly in Los Angeles, Dana Point, Orange County and upwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of doing the 101 and stopping at yours at the end for a cup of tea. Well, you can kind of venture off the 101 a little bit if I'm back there by the time you go. Yeah, that's And what, who yeah. knows? Maybe my new place will be right on the 101. Who knows? Never know. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Amazing. Very interesting. Yes. Thank you very much. No problem. So that's a little a little tour that our listeners can do in the US and the UK for another top five episode. What would be nice for our listeners is um, if in our forum they could maybe recommend somewhere for us or for other listeners to go to and tell us a little bit about a special place in your country. It could be in a major city or off the beaten track, anywhere that you would recommend. It would be so interesting to hear. Maybe um, post some pictures and we will surely comment and uh, you know join in the conversation with you. So please don't be afraid to post in the forum. Um, in case someone is listening that's new, what is this forum you speak of, Dan? <laughs> the forum, good point, thanks very much. The forum is on our new website and a forum is a space on our website where people can come and type, you know, chat, write and leave messages. It's like a message board. Um, <gasps> and in you mean there... they can You mean they can talk with us? Yeah, hell yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be checking in most days. One of us will check in. You know, we'll be checking in at least sort of every other day to to catch up with all the comments in there. So it would be great to hear from you. If you're on our homepage, it's step three. Um, it's called spend time with us and join us, and that way you can be part of our community through our forums. Yes, you are already doing step one, listening to the podcast. Yeah. If you've gotten our episode guide, that's step two. Yeah. Step three, as we just mentioned, come chat with us. Come spend time with us. Let us know about your top recommendation. And step four is the big one, really. Step four is like taking your English to the next level, investing in your English and... Becoming a member. Becoming a member. <gasps> wow. A member of English Across the Pond. A pond member. Yeah, a pond supporter. A ponder. <laughs> yeah. Ponder. What should... Ponderer. You know, that's an interesting, an interesting thing our readers can also say. If you are a member, what is your name? Yeah. Please are help a, us. <laughs> are, you a, a, are you a frog in the pond? No, 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 no. That's not good. A ponder. But... A ponder. Yeah, yeah. We'll work on it. We're at it. Yeah, we're thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, until next week, my friend. It's been fantastic. Thanks very much. Don't forget to recommend us a place to visit in your country. Thanks, guys, for listening. See you on the forum and talk to you next week. Thank yeah. you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. In this week's top five episode, Dan and I actually gave you six recommendations for things to do and places to see in the U.S. and the U.K. This language focus is going to review those six places and tell you a little bit more about the episode guide. In the episode guide this week, there are tons of links to help you explore these places virtually and plan your trip if you're coming to the US or the UK. So you can download that episode guide and get those links now. Dan's recommendations for the UK were Stonehenge, The Lunge and I, and to get off the beaten track from York to Scarborough. Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument and you can check out Stone Circle, some Neolithic houses, or just marvel at a wonder of the world. Uh, on the London Eye, a giant Ferris wheel in London, you can sit in a pod and see for miles around the city. If you check out the website, you can see some of the different experiences you can get there too. If you get off the beaten track and go outside of the major cities from York to Scarborough, you'll see some cottages, creeks, and beautiful natural landscape. When you come to the U.S., be sure to check out Sedona, and make sure you drive up or down the 101. In Sedona, an Arizona desert town, you'll be surrounded by red rocks, steep canyons, and some pine forests. 
Be sure to check out some of the energy vortexes and healers as well. You'll go for hikes, see waterfalls, and have a picnic. You will do similar activities in Yosemite National Park, going on hikes and checking out waterfalls, and you'll definitely, definitely want to check out the sequoia trees. Finally, on the 101, you'll go from Los Angeles all the way to Washington and experience cities, coasts, forests, and other natural landscapes. Let's take a look at some of the language from today's podcast. A memorial is something that honours someone who has died, or an event where people died. If something is awe-inspiring, then it causes a strong feeling of wonder, respect and strong admiration. If you contemplate something, then you think deeply about it. A bucket list is a list of all the things you plan to do before you die. A vortex is a mass of spinning air or liquid that pulls things into its centre, sometimes used figuratively, referencing something with strong energy. Hippy-dippy is rejecting conventional practices, behaving outside the normal society. Momentum is the force or energy that keeps something moving forward. Bias is an unfair decision or tendency to think that someone or something is better than others. To venture off is to leave and go somewhere. And to check in is to see how someone is doing. If you marvel at something, then you look at it in admiration or awe. And finally, turning to some of the expressions and idioms, to jump on board means you're keen to do something or you want to join others doing something. I was excited to jump on board with my co-workers who wanted to start running together every weekend. To get off the beaten track is to go somewhere outside of the normal, central, tourist or popular areas. When John visited Cali, he got off the beaten track and explored some magnificent hikes and trails. If you scratch beneath the surface, then you look or explore further than what is obvious or what is right in front of you. An example is, it's so obvious to go to England's major cities, but if you scratch beneath the surface, you'll find some hidden beauties. Every other day is used to talk about day one, day three, day five, etc. So you skip a day between every day. You can also say every other week or every other month. So for an example, I go to the gym every other day. I can't go every day because I get too tired. 